Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday. It is the Earth Master out here about 11.21 a.m. California time here. October 8th, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe, by the way, having issues here with the EMSC joining the USGS uh, information here. So right now, just the USGS data on the globe. 1.5 into the Southern California area down south here across the uh, Riverside area, it looks like. Uh, offshore Northern California had a 4.3 earthquake earlier this morning, just a couple hours ago. Excuse me. <clears throat> We've been noticing uh, quite a bit of uptick out here recently at the southern end of this plate boundary. And the magnitudes are getting a little bit larger out here. Uh, with the 4.3 being the latest and the largest in this sequence of earthquakes out here across uh, the uh, plate boundary. This is going to be the... Juan de Fuca plate and the Pacific plate boundary here. You can see that uh, escarpment area extending well to the west here. Now, um, most of the time here when we see this activity stir up like that, that's further adding strain out here across the area of Northern California. And uh, so we'll have to watch that. Maybe might be looking at some larger scale activity taking place here soon or about ready to take place. Uh, because these magnitudes are not going away, and if anything, it appears as though they're getting a little bit larger each day. So once again, 4.3 off the coast of Northern California. Uh, prior to that, this earthquake here yesterday, a little 1.7 here at the southern end of the Cascadia Megathrust area. <clears throat> See if I can keep my voice here, hopefully. Uh, I think um, my voice has had it uh, in terms of the dry summer out here. It's just 100 degrees in October is ridiculous in California. Pacific Northwest here, mainly smaller microquake activity. Let's go ahead and check out Southern Cal, see what we got going on out here. Ridgecrest, uh, let's see, nothing really above 2.5. The last one was a 2.9 here in Nevada from just a couple hours ago. Most of the movement today in Southern California has been generally light not seeing any major swarm just a little bit of activity in our zones of interest around malibu um, ridgecrest area and getting a little bit of strain out here across the uh, this chunk of land in between the garlock fault shear zone and the plate boundary itself showing some somewhat in, of an elevated sequence of events out here uh, so we'll continue to watch this obviously uh, these uh, little events in terms of uptick in three and four magnitude range earthquakes uh, come and go in waves right now just a little bit of quietness going on but uh, i don't expect that to last for long uh, some movement out in nevada let's see what we got here for the yellowstone let me we'll get to space weather here in just a little bit i want to check out yellowstone see if we got anything stirring up out there today not seeing a whole lot showing up here on the seismograph stations looks like some wind events from yesterday and uh, maybe a spike or two of a small microquake out here but really nothing of uh, any major interest because we would know about it it would it would definitely be showing up uh, oklahoma texas out here typical movement in the oil fields and uh, one little lonesome earthquake out along the appalachia mountains 2.2 there from yesterday florida getting ready for milton We'll cover that hurricane activity here at the end of this video. As uh, far as uh, largest scale, largest magnitude out here in the last 24 hours, going to be that 5.8 Kermadec Trench and the 5.7 there from yesterday. Today so far after midnight, 4.9. Uh, seeing some movement there in that cluster of activity around the Kermadec Islands. This area definitely showing some uptick here. Mainly across this area here. We're getting... Uh, uh, just a cluster going on right on that segment. We'll continue to watch it uh, for some further activity. Let me see what we got going on here for the uh, GeoNet servers. Bring that up real quick. Seven hours ago, looks like a little 2.9 North Island side near Upper Hut. And then some activity yesterday, mainly in the two range. Yeah, some threes out there in the last couple days as well. 4.8, 5.7 there about three days ago. So uh, somewhat, you know, decent adjustment taking place here across this area in the last week. 
But uh, we'll continue to keep an eye there on the Kermadec Trench just north of this area because it's showing quite a bit of movement here in the last 24 hours. Not a whole lot th here through the uh, Papua New Guinea area or Fiji. And, uh, of course, I can't check the EMSC model here because it's not working on the Earthquake 3D globe. I'll have to uh, see if I can get a hold of that developer of the Earthquake 3D program there and see if there's an update because it's just not working. I can't uh, access some of the data. Uh, mainly fours across the uh, Java Trench and the Banda Sea area. Nothing major going on here across Japan for now. And uh, Alaska looks like some typical movement out there. Although uh, somewhat elevated here on the 2.5 map, showing a handful of earthquakes, roughly about the Aleutian Trench, all the way up towards the Burks Range, even one out here across the area in between Russia and the Alaska area, 3.4 from earlier this morning. Anything major going on out here in Hawaii? Nothing at the moment here. Things just kind of sitting still. No major changes going on there across the area for now in terms of volcanic activity and uh, there's let's see here I think these two earthquakes here are from yesterday 4.2 4.6 that makes sense here because uh, these fracture zones out here across the plate boundary of the Nazca plate uh, put strain out here against the Peru Chile Trench that's normally where we'll see a lot of adjustment take place following any activity out here along the eastern area of the Pacific Plate and this area down south here. So a little bit of uptick following that 5.7 yesterday. Right where it's right where it's expected. All right, space weather activity. Goodness, I've seen a lot of auroras all over the place. I uh, got a few folks there sending me some aurora pictures on the email. Uh, Earthmastermail at gmail.com. I'll we'll see if I can put together a little uh, compilation of them and show them tonight. I appreciate that. Uh, flare threat remains elevated there, about 30% chance, M flare at 75, C flare at 99% chance, and man, we got up to the G3 storming conditions there last night. Really weird how this solar activity has been here recently with uh, the arrival of a CME, but very late. Uh, and this was from a powerful X flare, X9.1 here few days back but it just seems odd that it took so long to arrive I, I don't know I mean I, it seems like the forecast here has been getting uh, a little haywire I mean either way something hit us last night uh, in terms of sparking up the auroras I've seen auroras all over the place out there G3 storming conditions were observed right now still somewhat unsettled conditions here um, keep index up around uh, you know, some of these still showing up around the five range or so. So maybe potentially some further aurora activity tonight after dark here across the North American side of the earth. But uh, not really expecting anything like what we had seen had seen uh, last night. I didn't get a chance to get out there. I don't think we've seen it here in Northern California, but, uh, you know, there's quite a few areas down south. I even, I even heard Kentucky and a lot of the northern tier states and nebraska goodness got to see uh, some awesome auroras a lot of red color in there as well pink red color so we'll watch for that tonight i don't again i don't expect too much stirring up out there but if it does i'll be surprised then we might want to look at what's actually causing that uh uptick in aurora activity because uh, it doesn't make sense as to why this has you know, been acting a little funny here in terms of the arrival times from CMEs that uh, blast off the uh, the sun out there. Right now, let's look at the magnetogram image here. And uh, we got a couple different sunspots that are currently facing the Earth. Here's this area that was producing the long duration X flare here yesterday. That, uh, if it did produce the CME, is directed way away from earth due to that position on the western limb and we're left with uh, a number of sunspots here that are really not uh, all that complex i guess this one out of the three here is going to be the most complex and uh, will be the most geo effective if it does produce any type of significant flare or cme this has a split core this one over here not all 
that dynamic. But uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on this one here. That's going to be sunspot number 38. Uh, well, it looks like maybe two of them in there. But I believe the main one's going to be around 38, 48 here. Or 38, 49, excuse me. All right, uh, Hurricane Milton. Goodness, yesterday, Category 5. Let's see what we're at there today. I know it's been uh, inhaling a little bit of drier air here, so it weakened slightly. Uh, we're just below the threshold of the Category 5 here. Let me show you guys. 155 mile per hour sustained winds here. So just about two miles per hour below the threshold of category five. That is rapidly strengthening once again, though. So it is expected to uh, hit the Florida area as a strong category four. A, a little bit of weakening, but who's, who's to say that this doesn't hold steady with a category five all the way to Tampa? So no joke. A lot of people getting out of there. Uh, this is a serious hurricane and something these guys haven't experienced here in over 100 years so uh, it's, it's a big deal moving off to the uh, north or east northeast at about eight miles per hour again 155 mile per hour sustained winds hurricane warnings in effect here in the red on both sides of the coast of florida and uh tropical storm warnings here south and north of the main area and uh goodness Storm surge inundation, that's a uh, big deal as well. Get out of the Bay region because we're expecting some storm surge greater than nine feet above the ground here in the red around the Tampa Bay area. Um, this map is accessible not only on the hurricane page, but also I'm sure on the Florida, um, state Florida sites uh, where they're issuing, issuing uh, evacuation notices and whatnot. But look at that. There's there's going to be a lot going on out there, folks. A lot of rain, rain uh, fall, peak storm surge. Again, 12 feet plus around the Tampa Bay area, Tampa region. 10 to 15 feet, folks. That's no joke of storm surge. That looks to be the brunt, the brunt of it right here with up to 10 feet, uh, up to 12 feet, I should say, here in the red, north and south around that area. This is, is expected to hit uh, roughly on, uh, let me go back here and see when this is. Uh, it's supposed to be about Wednesday. Uh, now they're calling it, looks like maybe late Wednesday, Wednesday night sometime. Looks like it's slowing down a little bit. And that's not necessarily a good thing for this thing to slow down. That just allows it some further time to strengthen as it's doing right now. Uh, and uh, over those warm Gulf waters, going to rapidly intensify. Let's see what this thing looks like on the infrared satellite imagery here. Current storms. Milton, look at that. See, as you can see right here, there's a, <clears throat> a little bit of dry air being sucked in here from the land. That's going to be the Yucatan, Mexico area. But it doesn't look like it's uh, affecting it too much here. Weakened it slightly, but it's still got a well-defined eye wall. And uh, once it's over here across the open waters, it's going to have nothing but warm, humid moisture out here to suck in off the Gulf of Mexico and um, continue to rapidly intensify here, folks. So we're going to have to watch this pretty closely. Some are saying Category 4. Some are saying Category 5 around uh, landfall there around Tampa. So... And the expected path is still consistent. Let's go ahead and check this out. Right around the Tampa Bay area, all in agreement. None drifting north, none drifting south here. So that's the expected model guidance. And the expected range here uh, in the next, well, obviously, once it hits the Florida area, it's going to weaken drastically as it moves over land. But uh, all models here are showing consistency in the four range. Couple topping off here in the five, but we're already almost in the five already. So these models have been uh, very lenient and below what it's actually doing. So, you know, I would count on a category five, regardless if it's 158 mile per hour sustained winds or 155. That is no joke. That's nothing to mess around with out there across the area. So get out of harm's way. I see quite a few storm chasers heading out there put themselves right in the line of fire so to speak but uh hey they're professionals though right they know what they're doing hopefully um 
That's just that's a little bit too windy for me. I know Missy Mimi's she wants to experience a Category Five, but I you know 155 157 mile per hour sustained winds there. Not many people can stand up when it's that windy. So to me that just doesn't seem fun. I don't mind some wind. I love thunderstorm winds and whatnot, but 157 mile per hour sustained winds that's just crazy. So we'll continue to watch that, folks. Again, expected sometime on Wednesday. Most of the weather models are showing that uh, late Wednesday. Let me check out the windy map here, see what we have for the um, hurricane tracker. Milton, update 37 minutes ago, 155 mile per hour sustained winds. These guys are showing a category three just offshore here south with the Iowa, with the uh, area of circulation south of Tampa. Now that's the ECMWF model. The uh, GFS model is still showing category three, but I don't know. I don't see any reason why that would weaken out there. HRRR model. So tomorrow about 1700 in the uh, late afternoon time period there for Wednesday just offshore. So we'll see how this plays out, folks. I mean, there's really no reason for this thing to weaken at all. Um, a lot of moisture here it can pull off of. So we'll just see what happens. I, I'm i leaning towards this thing holding steady as a Category 5 for a little bit. Maybe weakening slightly, um, but not to a Category 3. All right. I uh, hope everyone has a good day. Again, on the Earthquake 3D globe here. Let me see what we got going on in California. Bakersfield filling in. Malibu. Yeah, just be on guard. They're starting to pick up a little bit here in the last hour across Southern California. But here on the Earthquake 3D globe, we have the option of integrating different agencies here. And normally, and I've had it before. You guys seen it here on the live stream and, and my updates. It shows the EMSC and the USGS combination. But... When you combine the feeds here, even the EMSC is not working. Look at this. We'll go over here, get rid of that, and then just add the EMSC World Last 50. There's nothing coming up here. I can't adjust the date. The servers are offline. Um, so it appears as though it's an issue with the Earthquake 3D globe here, accessing the data servers. Uh, but the USGS is working right now, and that's what I have up. Um, mainly 2 point, 2 point, uh, I was at about 2.2, 2.1 and above for the states. And uh, international is going to be 4.0 and above. The only thing is when we utilize just the USGS, we lack the uh, smaller earthquakes in various other international communities. Like not able to see what's going on out here in smaller magnitudes across the Mediterranean or, you know, the Middle America Trench or anywhere else. So hopefully they get that fixed it just did that it just happened to have an issue yesterday so um we'll wait a couple days if it doesn't get fixed here then i'll message the developer and see if i can get an update here myself so that we can uh, add multiple agencies back on the globe here because it's pretty important to have other options besides just one agency and that's a usgs which is sometimes a little slow to uh, getting around to the earthquake activity All right, have a good one, folks. Uh, seismograph stations out there pretty quiet. Uh, maybe a little spiky activity here on the Parkfield, California station, but those are very small microquakes. Aside from that, have yourself a good Tuesday, and we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this afternoon or this evening here for the uh, Tuesday night update. Take care.